Organic Vegetable Gardening, Agricultural Extension Service, University of Tennessee, Publication 1391. Getting it to the farm. Organic Vegetable Gardening. Other alternatives. Several things can be done to prevent some insects and diseases from reaching plants. Methods of controlling certain insects without using insecticides are also available. Most of these are compatible with organic gardening philosophy and can be of help to gardeners. Barriers. Several types of barriers can be used to prevent certain insects from reaching a plant or plants. Small paper or plastic cups with the bottoms removed, for example, can be pushed into the ground around young transplants to protect them from cutworms. Aluminum foil wrapped around young plants will serve much the same purpose. Six inch lengths of sewer pipe may also be placed over young plants as a combination cutworm barrier and windbreak. Nylon bird mesh or mesh berry baskets placed over the plastic cups or sewer pipe will protect young seedlings from birds. Diatomaceous earth, a chalk-like substance consisting of microscopic sharp shell particles sprinkled around young plants may protect them from slugs, snails, and some soft-bodied insects. Wood ashes are also reported to have the same effect. Individual collars placed around cabbage or broccoli will frequently protect them from root maggots. Cut a six-inch square or disc of foam rubber carpet padding or tar paper. Punch a small hole in the middle and make a slit from the edge to the hole. Fit the barrier tightly around vulnerable plants and cover each barrier with enough earth to hold it down. Hot caps, small domes made of translucent paper may also prevent insect or disease spores from reaching individual plants. Other barriers can protect entire rows of plants. Spun bonded row covers, for example, can be placed over young plants of the cabbage family to exclude various cabbage feeding insects or over cantaloupe and cucumbers to keep cucumber beetles off. Spun bonded row covers should be applied loosely so they can be lifted by plants as they grow. Heavy rain may cause the covers to become stuck with mineral soils, requiring re-loosening of the covers. Apply them immediately after planting before insects attack the plants. Remove covers from cucumbers and other plants requiring pollination when the plants begin to flower. Water will pass through spun bond row covers, but a small amount of heat will be retained as an additional benefit of this material. Controlling weeds growing beneath the covers may be a severe problem. Remove row covers when it is cloudy and water the plants to reduce shock. Mulches, both plastic and organic, can serve as a barrier against diseases that are spread partially by soil splashing onto plants. Early blight and buckeye rod of tomatoes are example. Mulches will not eliminate these diseases, but they may delay their onset and eventual severity. Organic mulch applied around tomatoes while the soil is still cool may delay ripening a few days, but black plastic mulch will warm the soil and speed ripening. Mulches will also reduce numbers of some insects, 
such as Colorado potato beetles, by preventing their emergence from the soil where they overwintered and by slowing their migration from ED overwintering sites to plants in the garden. Gardeners should be aware that mulches can serve as hiding places for some insects and increase incidence of some diseases by retaining too much water around plant roots. Black plastic, for example, may increase damping off and root rot of peas and beans or bacterial diseases of tomatoes. This is especially true when it is used around seedlings growing in poorly drained soil. Repellents It would be great to be able to use a repellent to keep insects from bothering plants, but unfortunately there are no effective broad-based repellents. Some gardeners have used solutions made from hot peppers, garlic, or strong-smelling herbs to discourage insects. It's unclear whether these solutions are toxic to some insects, repel them, or even work at all. The Extension Service has no data regarding their usefulness, but cautions that these solutions are seldom legal to use on vegetables to be sold. Reflective plastic mulch in various colors and aluminum foil mulch can be used to repel thrips and aphids on some vegetables. Reducing aphid and thrip infestations may also reduce the spread of viruses caused by these insects. These mulches apparently confuse thr thrips and aphids, making it more difficult for them to locate vegetable plants. Mulch the area under very young plants completely for best results. However, mulching too early may prevent the soil from warming up and delay maturity. It may also be necessary to provide holes in the mulch to allow moisture to reach plant roots. Numerous repellents have been used to keep moles from the garden. These include castor beans, gopher spurge, windmills, and etc. Their common trait is that none of them produce consistent results. The best way to eliminate moles is trap them. Mole traps are difficult to use properly, but can be very effective. More detailed information can be found in Extension Fact Sheet SP293-A, Mole Control in Tennessee. Traps Shingles, boards, and even inverted cabbage leaves placed in the garden will collect slugs, cutworms, squash bugs, and other pests that hide in moist, dark places. They can be collected from these hiding places and destroyed by dropping them into a container of water covered with a thin layer of oil. Pheromone traps are mechanical devices that contain scents that attract specific insect species. Pheromone traps are available for Japanese beetles and a wide range of other insects. These insects are enticed into the trap by the scent and are unable to get out. These traps attract pests from a considerable distance, but do not immediately catch all insects they tracked. They are best used some distance from the garden to attract the insects away from and not into the garden. Pheromone traps may provide adequate control of several pest species. Light traps have been used outdoors for control of various flying insects. There's little or no evidence that light traps adequately control many garden insects. Sticky red spheres or sticky yellow traps will attract and trap a variety of insects, 
They are better used to monitor insect populations than control specific insect species, though. Baits Sometimes pests can be attracted away from the growing vegetables and killed. Some slug baits, for example, can be placed in small piles on boards or in containers. Slugs are attracted to these baits, eat them, and die. Another way to trap slugs is to place shallow containers filled with beer in the soil with the top of the container level with the soil surface. Slugs will be attracted to the beer and drowned. A solution of one pound of sugar, one teaspoon of yeast, and a gallon of water fermented two or more days works as well. This makes use of both the trap and bait concept. All of these baits must be replenished frequently. Traps need to be cleaned and refilled. Baits will last longer if some sort of cover is provided to keep rain from diluting or destroying them. Birds. Many birds eat large amounts of insects and weed seed. Encouraging these birds will greatly reduce insect and disease problems in home gardens. Encouraging birds by planting berry-forming shrubs and small trees, by providing a source of water, a bird bath, and providing nesting sites and bird feeders. Extension Fact Seat SP239-D Building Birdhouses discusses construction of a wide range of birdhouses and how to locate them. Some birds also consume vegetables. Do not permit any seed to remain visible on the surface of the ground when planting vegetables. It may also be necessary to occasionally make use of netting or spun bonded row covers to protect vegetables from birds. Imitation snakes, owls, and hawks can repel birds only if they are removed frequently from place to place and then only for a short time. Plastic foam cups inverted over corn ears after pollination may protect corn ears from blackbirds. Beneficial Insects Most insects are neither particularly harmful nor beneficial to home gardens. It's important to identify the insects present in a garden to determine whether or not controls are needed. It's also important to study the insect's life cycle to determine how best to assist or control it. Table 2 lists some common beneficial insects and the pests they feed on. Insect Ground Beetles Large, shiny, dark brown beetles feed on caterpillars, army worms, and cutworms. Ladybugs, small, round, colorful beetles with blue-yellow striped larvae. They feed on aphids, mites, scale, and many insect eggs. Predaceous stink bugs have a medical shield shape. They feed on many insects. Ambush bugs, large, dark bug with a long, narrow head. They feed on whatever they can catch. Tachnid flies, a small drab fly. They parasitize many insect larvae. Lace wings. A one inch long insect with lacy wings producing a stocked egg. They feed on insects, mites, scale insects, and many insect eggs. Praying mantis, three inch long insect with a triangular head. 
They feed on many insects. Predatory mites. Very small, eight-legged, not true insects. They feed on spider mites. Some gardeners purchase and release various beneficial insects into their garden to control harmful insects. A variety of companies sell beneficial insects. Extension Fact Sheet SP290-Z, Commercial Sources for Predators and Parasites, lists several such companies. Ladybugs and many other beneficial insects are extremely mobile and may not stay where you put them. Others, such as praying mantis, will consume each other. Introducing large numbers of insects into a small garden may be of limited value. Encouraging natural populations, however, can be very helpful. Begin by growing a variety of vegetables in the garden. Allowing natural vegetation to survive near the garden may increase beneficial insects, but may also increase harmful insects as well. To successfully use beneficial insects, you should learn not only which insects are beneficial, but also which host plants encourage which insects. Unnecessary chemical applications should also be avoided if beneficial insects are to be encouraged. Hand Picking Gardeners may control some insects by hand picking. This method of control is most successful in small gardens and with large insects that are present in small numbers. Tomato hornworm, squash bugs, cabbage worms, Colorado potato beetles, and other large insects may be controlled in this way. After insects are removed from plants, they may be killed by crushing or being dropped into a container of soapy water or water covered with a thin layer of oil or kerosene. While hand-picking squash bugs, also crush or remove the reddish or bronze egg masses found on or under the leaves. Insects such as blister beetles and some caterpillars can sting or burn when they are touched, wear gloves, or learn to identify common garden insects. Get me to the farm